Hello everyone, welcome to the Thastu and welcome to our daily current affairs MCQs wherein we are going to do the MCQs through current affairs itself. Let's get started but before that a little bit of information related to the courses which you can find over there on our website. The details related to those courses and all of these are available in the hybrid mode so you can join any of these. So, MSLV, PSLV, NCRT module and philosophy optional, you can get the complete details related to all of these over there on tathastuics.com or you can call on these numbers and you can even visit our office as well, okay. So, let's get started with the very first question of the day and it is related to GBA that is the Global Biofuels alliance okay so the very first statement says that this initiative is a spearheaded by india within the g20 consortium second is the alliance was founded by india brazil and the united states the third one is every g20 member is a part of this particular alliance so you have to find out that with how many of these statements are actually correct here okay so it's as it is actually very easy recently only it has been announced it has been launched during this summit only so all the g20 members are actually not the part of this so statement one and two are correct third one is not right pm formally launches global biofuels alliance that is b uh, b sorry gba 19 countries and 12 international organizations they have actually showed their willingness in order to join it okay so, this has been recently launched. Now, who are the founding members over here? So, so, founding members are India, Brazil and United States. That is Bharat, Brazil and USA. So, the what is the primary goal over here? So, the primary goal is actually the transition thing. Okay, we need to, if we want to save our earth, yesterday only we did this thing in our DNA that if the temperature increases beyond this 1.5 degrees Celsius, then it is going to be disastrous for the earth. Now, in order to save it, in order to not to let that happen, we have to take actions. Okay, so for that, the very first thing which comes into the mind is the cut off, cutting off the usages of the fossil fuels okay so that is something which is really very important over here so uh, the transition thing energy transition process for this particular uh, particular purpose we need biofuels over here and their potential contribution to job creation and economic advancement also so for all of these we need biofuels now when it comes to the aim of this okay so this uh, it aims it is it is to create virtual marketplace. What is what is the aim over here? The virtual marketplace connecting stakeholders involved in supply and demand as well as linking technology providers with the end users which is really very important because we are the one who will be using or the any of the industries who ever are you going to use these biofuels so we need to connect we need to create some kind of linkage between the uh, between that of the technology providers with the end users and this will be benefiting the various industries countries and even the ecosystem participants also so all of these will be benefiting so here you can see 19 countries and 12 international organizations they have shown their willingness in order to uh, join it with its members being significant contributors and consumers of biofuels over here now, when it comes to the prelims, exercises are really very important, whether it is the army military exercise or naval or that of the air force, whatever exercises is being conducted between any of the countries, whether you talk about France or uh, that of the US or with that of uh, Singapore or Russia, whoever, okay, these are really very important from our prelims perspective. So, this is the, these kind of questions are very important, you need to know. So, exercise Varuna is a bilateral naval exercise between India and Singapore. India and USA, India and France and that of the India and Russia. Which of these are correct over here? So, answer is option C that is India and France. Okay. So, this had this this had actually taken place and this was actually the 21st edition of India France bilateral naval exercise Varuna. Please do remember that is Varuna. Okay. Varun. Varuna exercise is a bilateral naval drill involving both India and 
France and uh, uh, the exercise uh, what, what were the actually the participants over here so so the participants were the missile frigates tanker maritime patrol aircraft and integral helicopters from the two sides okay all of these were uh, involved in this exercise now the next question question number three consider the following statements with reference to pearl millet so this government uh, the present central government uh, it has always been pressing or you cannot say actually pressing what it won't be the right one but uh, they are uh, encouraging people to consume millets one of the very important is the pearl millet so bajra is the very first statement is bajra is an alternative name for pearl millet second is this crop is cultivated during the dry and warm rabi season rabi season primarily in the northwestern and western regions of india relying on rain fed farming third is pearl millet is known for its resilience as it can withstand prolonged dry periods and drought conditions how many of these are correct related to pearl millet so they all of these are really very basic information related to this pearl millet answer is b the first and third statements are correct and the second statement is actually wrong over here the, the, this particular grain is actually a kharif crop okay so it is being uh, it is being grown during the kharif season only and in the arid region and in the arid northwestern and western regions of india okay so it is not being sown over there on the plain areas so it is basically there in the arid region of northwestern and western regions pearl millet is also known as bajra in india okay so there is a song also related to this <laughs> bajra well it is highly resilient and uh, with the ability to withstand frequent frequent dry spills and drought conditions and this is the reason why it can be grown really very nicely in the arid region because it can withstand the, these kind of tough situation also okay now let's move on to the next question of the day consider the following statements about india middle east europe economic corridor that is imec the very first statement related to this is the initiative involves the participation of india the uae israel european union and the united states second is this imec consists of both an eastern corridor that links india with the gulf region and northern corridor that connects the gulf region to europe third is the corridor exclusively encompasses transportation via roadways and air routes how many of these are correct so you have to find out that how it is going to connect from india to the middle eastern areas then to europe how it is going to connect so this, this these are again very basic thing answer is a so only statement two is correct over here india middle east europe mega economic corridor what is the project and why is it being proposed it is actually very interesting and important also and uh, i will be taking a class on this uh, most probably tomorrow related to the kind of trading we had been always doing since ages with europe and the routes related to that i will be discussing that okay so this india middle east europe economic corridor so you can very easily understand it is connecting india middle east region and the european region this connects india uae saudi arabia european union france italy germany and the us is also involved in this thing right so all of these are connected right and then the us comes here what is the primary objective primary objective is obviously to enhance the trade among the participating nations obviously because that that was the trade route okay uh, since the age is only now including the exchange of energy projects will be done over here okay now <clears throat> here you can see the route from india it will go by ship 
then the train will be used then again ship will be there okay and through the ship it will be transferred further okay so this is how it is supposed to be moved so the transition will be it will include railways ship rail transit and road transport routes will also be acquired over there in order to cross the land regions okay so roadways railways and ship okay the waterways that is going to be included over here the project features a rail connection an electricity cable hydrogen pipeline and a high speed data cable in order to get the data related to uh, these ships and all okay now what is the significance obviously the trade will be improved and we are going to revive the very purana relation between these places the initiative is to, uh, is poised to boost prosperity among the participating nations because if one nation is going to grow then definitely other nation is also going to be benefited from the from the kind of uh, from the kind of growth which the other participating uh, the country is actually getting among participate uh, participating nations by facilitating the flow of energy and digital communications over here and it addresses even the infrastructure issues also infrastructure deficit necessary for the growth in the lower and middle income countries will also be resolved because in order to pass it, participate in this thing we we will definitely need you know better transit better ways to move so we will be working on that as well and not only us the other people also they will be working people means the countries now the last question of the day it is consider the following statements regarding red sand boa we have already covered this thing in our dna i hope you must have heard about this the very first statement is the red sand boa found in arid regions of Indian subcontinent ranks as the most venomous, venomous snake. Second is this serpent is also recognized by the name Indian sand boa. Third is it has received a critically endangered classification from the International Union for Conservation of Nature that is IUCN with its population dwindling. How many of these are correct? I seriously expect you people to answer it correctly answer is option a that is only one statement the second statement is correct i hope you remember the this image of snake sand boa okay so 172 incidents from 2016 to 2021 has been you know caught that have been recorded related to the seizures of this red sand boa okay so it is also referred it uh, this when it, it is a non-venomous serpent okay it is not the most but it is non-venomous serpent inhabiting the arid regions within the indian subcontinent itself okay now when it comes to the characteristics of this particular snake it has a robust build typically displaying a reddish brown crine or kind of the hue so the kind of color you will see that reddish brown kind of color you will see on this thing okay and it is notable for its blunt tail actually which employs the mimic of its head because you won't be able to identify that whether it is a tail or the face because both of these actually looks quite similar okay so both of this actually looks quite similar so it is little difficult to understand that which one is the face and which one is the tail over here now when it comes to the iucn it is under it falls under near threatened uh, category and its population is on uh, declining trajectory and the kind of incidents which uh, which is actually being coming to the light that they are being captured and transferred from one place to another place for various purposes and all if this thing continued then definitely it is going to transfer to the critically endangered and then finally extinct okay well this is it related to our daily current affairs mcqs i hope you people enjoyed it see you in the next video good night take care jai hind